everyone welcome back to the Hakian channel so today we are doing a bit of a recap on factorizing algebraic expressions so if you need to have a quick flashback as to where this was seen uh, it would have been term one and so this um, next few lessons we're going to be focusing on a bit of a recap on chapter eight before we move on to nonlinear equations um, because this we believe is the foundation of what you need to know uh, to be able to complete um, the next chapter. Cool. So today's learning intention is to understand the relationship between factorize and expanded form. So if anything, this is more of like to recap the relationship between factorize and expanded form. So by the end of today's lesson, you need to most definitely be able to identify the highest common factor, which is also known as the HCF. Um, you might want to write this down. Um, you can factorize an expression involving a common factor and you can write an expression in factorized form. So we're going to be diving into that. So just a quick visual representation. Um, you can see here 2 bracket x minus 3 close bracket equals 2x minus 6. So if I was to expand that expression here, it would be 2x minus 6. If I was to factorize 2x minus 6, it would be 2 a bracket x minus 3. So this is just a visual representation. Okay, expanding is where you get rid of the brackets. Okay, and factorizing is where you bring the brackets back. That's a very key... Um, indicator of the clear difference between expanding and factorizing. So let's uh, get started. Also, um, you're more than welcome to pause the video um, at any time to take notes. So firstly, how to factorize. The first step is to take out the highest common factor, also known as the HCF. So the HCF can be a number, a pronumeral, which is a letter, for those of you who have forgotten your algebra terminology, it's a letter. Or it can be a number and a pronumeral, number and letter. So I've just attached a few examples here. So if the question was 2x plus 10, to factorize it, you need to think about what they both have in common. So I can see that 2, is, two can go into 2 without remainders, and 2 can also go into 10 without remainders, so without being a decimal point, okay? So if I take two out, you need to, so I took two out of this, both these expressions, I'm taking two out, you would do two divided by two, which will give you a one, a one X, but we don't write one because one is imaginary. And to get the five, you would do 10 divided by two. That's how you would solve what goes in the brackets. You would divide the number by both of the um, parts in the question. So for the letter, simply think of it as you're subtracting. So x squared plus 5x, I can see that they both have a letter. So this is the example for number. That's the example for letter. And this one's the example for number and pronumeral. So if you take the letter out, all right, so if I take X out of that one there, so you bring it outside the bracket, there will be one X remaining because this is saying there is two lots of X's. If I take an X out of that expression there, that means it would just be five by itself, okay? So when you do it, you need to, this one you don't divide, you simply subtract. You subtract, okay? And that would be the factorized form of x squared plus 5x. So here we can see 2x squared plus 10x. So I can definitely see that they both have x in common, so I can take x out. And they both are divisible by 2, so I can take 2 out. So the two components I'm taking out is 2x, a number and a letter, and so with that, with the number, I divided it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? And x we've taken out, so x squared, okay? 
Taking out 1x will give you 1x remaining. 10 divided by 2 is a 5. And we're taking out an x again, so there is no x there. Now, you may be wondering why I don't take out two lots of x's. That's because this one here doesn't have two lots of x's. If the equation was 2x squared plus 10x squared, okay, you can take out x squared because they both have it. You can only take out the number, I'm sorry, the letter um, of that's the lowest. So for example, this only has one x, That's has two x's, you can only take the one x because one x is the lowest. If I had two x2 and two uh, plus 10 x3, the lowest we would say from there is x2 because that's got two x's and that's got three x's. You can't say I'm going to take out x to the power of three because there is only two in this part of the question. You can only take the smallest amount out. We're going to have to practice this, okay? Now, you can check if you have factorized correctly by expanding, meaning you get rid of the brackets. So if you got that as your answer and you're like, you know what, I'm going to double check. You can double check by multiplying the outside number by the inside number. So 2x times x is 2x squared plus 2x times 5, which is 10x. And you can see that that will match the question to see if what you have factorized is correct. They must always come back to the same answer. So let's quickly just practice taking out the highest common factor first. So over here, I can see that let's do A over here and let's do B on this side. So what number can go into 4 and 10 without remainders, but the highest number? I can say it's 2 because 2 can go into both of those numbers. So 4x and 10x, y. If I take out 2 from each of them, it would be 2x and 5xy. Do we agree? Because I've just divided it both by 2. That's what I said in the last slide. Now, the next thing is, what do they, do they have a common letter? Yes, they do. They have X. So now I will take out X from both sides, okay, and it would be X and 5Y. Now, do they have any common letter or number now? No. So the highest common factor for 4X and 10XY was 2X, what I put over here. Now, I only have shown you the symbols as to how I identified if it was a factor for the two. All right, so let's do the same here. 5x squared and 15xy. So what number? what's the highest number that can go into both of them? Five can go into both of them, okay? 15 can't go into five, okay? But five can go into 15, okay? That's because... If I had 15 slices of pizza, I could split that evenly with five people. But if I had five slices of pizza, it's more difficult to split for 15 people. So the first thing is, can I divide them both by five? Yes, I can. Okay, so here we are, 15 divided by five is three, and I've just added the letter. Now, do they both have a similar letter? Now, what is the lowest amount of letter of x's you see? It's 1x, not x to, x to the power of 2, okay? 1x. So you can say, if I subtract x from both sides, okay, that is allowed. You cannot subtract x to the power of 2 or two lots of x's. So the HCF of 5x squared and 15xy is 5x. Okay, and you can write that, like the HCF is 5x. Let's move along. So now you can see there is uh, a number and letter that's on the second half of the question, not the first half. So what number goes into both 28 and 21a? Let's think about it. What number? So I can say it's this is where multiplication comes into play. So 3 can go into both of them. So if I take 3 out, all right, it would be 3 
So what's 28 divided by 3? 7. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's not 3, people. It's 7. 7. So 7 goes into 28 and 21. So 28 divided by 7 is 4. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. A. Okay. Now, do they have a common letter? No. So to factorize this expression, it would be 7 bracket 4 minus 3A. All right. Now, I just want to quickly go back real quick. I've just noticed something that I didn't do. Uh, actually, no, that's right. So that is what you would do there. So over here, what number goes into both? I could say 3. So let me just write it out. Now, when there is a negative at the front, you actually want to get rid of it. Um, I don't know. It's just a rule of thumb. You just want to get rid of it. So if you get rid of it, okay, so I would actually take out negative 3 out because you don't want the negative there. So if I take out the minus, it actually becomes a plus. So 9 divided by 3 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9, okay? Now, if you take a minus out, everything becomes the opposite symbol. So this now becomes a plus, this becomes a plus, okay? And 15 divided by 3 is 5x, okay? So when you take the minus out, both the signs become the opposite. Now, is this completed? No, because I can see that they both have x. So now I will take the smallest amount of x out, which is one of the x's, so negative 3x. And now I will go 3x, because I've taken out 1x out, plus 5. And that would be the factorized form of negative 9x squared minus 15x. So now you are given multiple brackets. But you're probably confused because factorization involves brackets, meaning you've got to keep brackets. If you see two brackets that are exactly the same, so a plus b and a plus b, that equals to one of the brackets automatically. And the remaining bracket is 4 plus a. Okay. Now, I actually would have done 4 plus a, a plus b. Okay. I would actually have done these two in the triangle first. Oh, probably won't do that A there. Oh. Oh. Okay, I would do the triangle first and then the square. Triangle, then the square. All right, so over here, oh, that, that's the answer, guys. Literally, like you just see two of them the same and you just, that's already one of the brackets. And the other brackets is um, what is outside A plus B. So over here, we can see going with what I did, so triangle, so triangle, triangle. So what's the imaginary number? One. So the triangle is one minus x. I'm just doing shapes just so you can easily identify it. And the rectangle you can see is exactly the same. So 4x plus 3. And that's it. And that's the factorized form of B. And that's the factorized form of A. And that's it. Okay. Now, with that said, that is all for factorizing. It's mostly um, practicing how to identify the highest common factor and being able to um, do the brackets and the negative signs. I believe the hardest component may be this one, um, perhaps purely because um, we need to touch up on our positives and negatives that we've um, done throughout the year. Okay, so if you need to ask your teacher questions, feel free to do that. I um, mean, if not, um, we will see you in your next class. Thank you. Bye.